Greetings from beautiful Whistler, British Columbia, Canada. My name is Erin Sebula and I am honoured to welcome you to the 21st annual Whistler Film Festival Award Celebration and to help shine a light on the amazing talent that makes this fest so special. These awards are for the filmmakers and the film lovers. And we want to thank you so much for being here, for inspiring us with your vision, stories, and the creativity that you've brought to the screen in so many interesting ways. This year's festival includes the premieres of 81 epic, bold, and inspiring films, 40 features, and 41 shorts in six programs. And we are here to celebrate the best of the fest. Today's hardware includes 15 film awards in seven juried competitions with a whopping $36,500 in cash and production prizes, plus eight talent awards given to this year's esteemed signature award honorees and our stars to watch. 2021 also marks a major milestone in the Whistler Film Festival's history, achieving gender parity with more than 50% of these films directed or co-directed by women or non-binary individuals. Now that is something to celebrate, and I can't wait to see who wins. So without further ado, I would like to invite the BC Minister of Tourism, Art, Culture and Sport, Melanie Mark, to bring greetings on behalf of the province of British Columbia. Hi everyone, my name is Melanie Mark, BC's Minister for Tourism, Arts, Culture and Sport and the first and only First Nations woman to ever get elected in BC's history. I want to acknowledge the traditional unceded territory of the Musqueam, Squamish and Tsleil-Waututh Nations and thank you for inviting me to Canada's coolest film festival. First of all, big fan. Secondly, huge advocate for the arts and the creative sector and I want to thank you for putting on this festival. I know it's been a difficult year, but your stories are so important. It is so important to hear from the disruptors, those that are crushing glass ceilings, that are disrupting the status quo. We need your voice more than ever, and thank you for making sure that our voice is heard all across the world. Have an amazing time, keep shining. Thank you, Minister Mark and the province of British Columbia for your support of the Whistler Film Festival. The festival wouldn't be possible without a truly dedicated team backing it up. And I would like to invite Sue Browse, Vice Chair of the Board of Directors of the Whistler Film Festival Society, to speak on behalf of the board. Thank you for joining us on this very special and very first hybrid 21st edition of the Whistler Film Festival on behalf of the Executive Board. As we all endure another year of disruption due to the pandemic and environmental emergencies, we recognize that the festival takes place under extraordinary circumstances. During these past two years of tremendous challenges, the role of storytellers to entertain, educate, and illuminate the world as they see it has been paramount. It's through these stories that we have remained connected, have better understood the diverse experiences of our fellows, and have been inspired to surmount our own challenges. On behalf of the Board of Directors, we sincerely thank all the filmmakers, film fans, industry partners, supporters, sponsors, staff, and volunteers who give so much at this festival and year-round. Thank you for continuing to share this incredible journey with us. We also want to thank all of our Whistler community, including the Re Resort Municipality of Whistler, Tourism Whistler, Whistler Black Home, our accommodation, hospitality and venue partners, our local suppliers, and especially the local community who attended the in-person screenings and are viewing online along with, the rest, uh, along with others across the country until the end of the month for your ongoing support of the festival. We couldn't do this without you. You make me grateful to call this special place home. On behalf of the entire board, we wish to congratulate the 2021 Whistler Film Festival Award recipients. It has been an amazing array of talent, and you shone brightly among the stars. The board extends heartfelt thanks to Angela Heck, our new executive director, who is an incredible leader, and to the entire behind-the-scenes team. Their dedication, passion for storytelling, and creative instincts will continue to serve our organization and programs well into the future. It really does take a village to make this festival happen. Thank you for being part of ours in Whistler and online. Thank you, Sue, for everything you and all the dedicated volunteers do behind the scenes to make this a smashing success. It's now time to introduce the lovely Angela Heck, Executive Director of the Whistler Film Festival. Angela? For 21 years, the Whistler Film Festival has been proudly producing unique programs and experiences. What began in 2001 with a vision by founders Shauna Hardy and Casey Lubin 
to put a renowned ski resort on the map for world-class arts and culture, has evolved into one of Canada's foremost film festivals and industry gatherings. And it's an increasingly important part of the Canadian screen ecosystem. We pivoted and pirouetted our way to an entirely online edition in 2020, and this year we are genuinely grateful to have a chance to gather, connect, and celebrate the best of independent cinema at Canada's coolest film festival for you, in person and online, right through to the end of the year on December 31st. Our mandate is to discover, develop, and promote independent film and filmmakers, and we do this by taking a holistic approach. We nurture new voices through our talent programs, create opportunities for creative and business collaborations in our content summit, and showcase and promote the work of talented creators at the festival and throughout the year. Our hybrid model allowed us to remove barriers and increase access, to reach new audiences with our film programming, and to discover, develop, and share diverse stories with a national and increasingly international audience. Our amazing programming team curated a slate of 81 films selected from over 1,500 submissions that highlight Canadian content creators and distinct and emerging new voices. And we attained a major milestone in gender parity for the first time, with over 50% of our films directed by women and non-binary filmmakers. And this is why we are here today, to celebrate our achievements in so many ways. There are many who championed us from our humble beginnings, our community, our corporate and industry supporters, and all of these amazing people that have our back. At 21, we are coming of age in a turbulent time. As the world changes, we remain committed to cultivating cultural experiences that unite people through cinema, and to discovering, developing, and promoting Canadian talent as we celebrate film as art, support it as an essential business, and foster a vibrant community of film lovers. On behalf of the team at the Whistler Film Festival, we look forward to seeing what creative collaborations flourish here this year and extend our congratulations to all the filmmakers who join us. Thank you so much, Angela. You rock. We are so thrilled to have you leading the charge in 2021. Now, before we get to our first award of the day, I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge the Power Pitch Award winner who was chosen in a lively competition that took place in Whistler on December 3rd. Five Canadian producers had a chance to pitch their projects to an esteemed international jury for a chance to win the $36,000 production prize package. Montreal's Christina Saliba and her project, White Noise, took home the prize, which includes a $25,000 post-production credit from Company 3 and a $1,000 cash prize and $10,000 in lighting and grip equipment from William F. White International Incorporated. Congrats to Christina and her crew. Special thanks to Cassandra Butcher of Braun Studios, Adam Steinman of Warner Brothers International Television Production, and our very own Paul Graton for their feedback and consideration of this year's amazing and outstanding pitches. It must have been tough, with so much talent vying for the win. Thanks also to pitch coach and facilitator Carol Kirshner, who helped the producers get ready for what I can only imagine is an absolutely nerve-wracking experience. I'm sweating just thinking about it. Christina, we can't wait to see your film come to life. Every year, the Whistler Film Festival recognizes the distinguished artists of our time and honors them with an intimate on-stage or online interview and award as part of the popular signature series. We call it the Vanguard Award, and it recognizes an actor, writer, director, or producer who has made a profound impact on the industry through their incredible body of work. This year's recipient is a producer, a sought-after voice actor, a writer, director, with more than 100 professional film, theater, and television credits to his name. He's a classically trained actor who's appeared in and directed a wide range of theater productions, including King Lear at the National Arts Center, Black Elk Speaks at the Denver Center, and it was recently announced that a newly constructed theater space at the Roxy Theater in Edmonton will be named in his honor. But many of you probably know him as Sergeant Davis Quinton on the international Emmy-nominated comedy Corner Gas, or as the voice of Grandpa Nat in the Peabody Award-winning series Molly of Denali on PBS. We know him as a mentor and an inspiration for many. Lauren Cardinal can be seen in the Whistler Film Festival BC premiere of Run, Woman, Run, directed by Zoe Lee Hopkins. And yes, he is this year's Vanguard Award recipient. Please give a warm online welcome to Lauren Cardinal. 
That's a, um, thank you very much. I am totally uh, honored and deeply moved by this, uh, this award, the Vanguard Award. I would like to thank uh, the uh, board members of the Whistler Film Festival and all the membership for uh, thinking of me. That's always a good thing to be thought of. Um, I would also like to thank uh, my beautiful wife, Monique Hurteau, who has brightened my day every day since we've been together and uh and she's always keeps me my my uh she's my compass point to keep me stable and level and and so i, I thank her deeply and also my uh all all the people i've worked with who who inspire me every day my agents here at lucas talent they've got my back and also all the uh actors and directors that i've worked with over the years they inspire me i steal from them there's a uh, there's a hot tidbit i steal all their business and then i take credit for it that's how you get to be <laughs> and um so i i uh, Oh, my career to a lot of people. Dr. David Edwards, my first acting teacher, who gave me the best advice in the world. If you want to succeed in this business, get training, learn technique and craft. And, uh, and, and it's hard work. There's no shortcut. Um, it's a lot of uh, tenacity, uh, learning how to take no for an answer and uh, keep going forward. And um, I thank my ancestors who have always been with me and, and who guide me and uh, enlighten me when I need uh, when I'm in a dark space, I, I reach out and they've always uh, given me an answer and a direction. So uh, uh, hi to all, uh, everybody. Thank you very much. I am honored. And uh, I'm going to play a song now. No, <laughs> I'm not. That's just, that's just for show. That's kind of a prop. That's Monique's stuff. So thank you very much. The Whistler Film Festival's One to Watch Award is presented to someone whose immense talent has catapulted them into critical acclaim and who the industry recognizes as destined for great success. This year's recipient is Devery Jacobs, one of the talented alumni who won Best Performance in a Borsos Film at the 2016 Whistler Film Festival with The Sun at Midnight. Born and raised in Ganawage Mohawk territory, Devery found her passion for the arts at a young age and received her big break when she was cast as the lead role in the award-winning feature film, Rhymes for Young Ghouls. While pursuing her acting career, Devery also studied to be a counselor and worked at Montreal's Native Women's Shelter. Since then, she's appeared in many film and television productions, including Blood Quantum, The Lie, The Road Behind, and most recently starring in season two of the hit Netflix original horror drama series, The Order, and the fantasy drama series, American Gods. She also stars in Academy Award winner Teika Watiti's new series, Reservation Dogs. Let's hear it for Devery Jacobs, the very deserving recipient of the One to Watch Award. Seiko is a wakwego going out here Devery Jacobs you just stand up on walk and you do my name is going out here Devery Jacobs and I'm proudly from Gahnawage Mohawk territory and I just wanted to say Nyawa, thank you. Firstly, to the Statlium, Squamish, and Lilwat Nations for hosting this film festival in your territory. Nyawa to my family and to my community for supporting me in this winding career path. Uh, and Nyawako, a huge thank you to Whistler Film Festival for honoring me with this award. The Whistler Film Fest has been such a supportive place in my career. You helped me workshop my short film Ray at the Indigenous Filmmaker Fellowship, and you also awarded me with Best Performance in a Barsos Film uh, for my work in The Sun at Midnight back in 2016. Uh, and my community, Gahnawage, has also had a hand in it by coming together and fundraising me, uh, fundraising to fly me to the Whistler Film Fest when I couldn't afford it to make sure that I was able to take part. I am so filled with gratitude for this award, uh, but also for all of the support that I've received as I've pursued this path. So Nyao Koa, thank you so much. Congratulations again to Devery. You are an inspiration. And if you'd like to learn more about her and her work, catch her in conversation with Lauren Cardinal as part of the Whistler Film Festival online. But don't delay, because it will only be available until December 31st. Cool? Okay, moving on to the Whistler Film Festival's Short Work Awards. This competition includes 41 short films from Canada and around the world, curated in six programs. These shorts are limited only by their length, as the bold filmmakers behind them find new and creative ways to tell stories of friendship, self-discovery, and adventure, revealing the truths 
that shape our lives. Today, our Short Works jury, Coral Aiken, Kelly Fife Marshall, and Christine Esterninos will award the Canadian International and Best BC Student Short Work Awards. Time now to announce the BC Student Short Work Award, presented by Capilano University's School of Motion Picture Arts. This category includes 14 short films produced by post-secondary students in British Columbia, vying for the award and a $500 cash prize. Hi, my name is Michael Toma, Chair of the School of Motion Picture Arts at the BOSA Centre for Film and Animation at Capilano University. We would all like to offer our congratulations to Ashley Yoon for a family act and we wish you all the best in the future. Thanks. For its assured direction and unique storytelling on family dynamics, we feel that Ashley shows much promise as a young director. So congratulations to Ashley Young for a family act. Oh my God, yeah! Thank you! That's <laughs> not wow. what I expected. <laughs> no, not at all. That's so awesome, thank you so much. Thanks. This is awesome. amazing. Wow. Wow. The jury was unanimous, so congratulations. Oh my god! Oh, that feels so nice. <laughs> <laughs> right after talking about like gratifying. Yeah, stuff. I oh know. God, yeah. That's amazing. Just yeah. like a ribbon, just on the whole experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just so grateful. <laughs> oh, uh, good brother. Thanks. Hola. <laughs> Up next, the Best Canadian Short Work Competition, which includes 24 short films battling it out for the title and a $1,000 cash prize. And my name is Zacharias Kunuk. Uh, I wanted to thank the Whistler Festival for awarding us being the make very much. It's an honor. now for the best international short work competition. This category includes nine short films and here to announce the winner is jury member Coral Aiken. Hi, I'm honored to present the award for best international short film. The award goes to Isoli Chicople by Ryan DeFranco and Matthew Mendelssohn. This short film uses the powerful imagery of a rocky seascape in this affecting exploration of dementia. The jury found this short work subtle and confident and were impressed with the character development and the artistry of the filmmaking. We also have an honorable mention for the successful thawing of Mr. Morrow by director Jerry Carlson. Featuring outstanding cinematography and production design, this accomplished short film tackles a complex subject with poetry and imagination. Congratulations, filmmakers. Oh, wow, that's amazing! <laughs> what? That's so great! <laughs> oh, wow, I am so excited. This is the first time we've ever won anything. Uh, wow, thank you so much. That's amazing. You're welcome. Yeah, congratulations. The jury was unanimous on it. They all loved it. Oh, wow. Oh, that's so cool. And with Nuisance Bear in there, too. Oh, they were Canadian. Oh, thank goodness they were Canadian. God, that was a good film. <laughs> there were so many good movies. I'm so excited and honored. Thank you so much. This is major. Thank you. Graucio, aveva un naso come il tuo. O ha detto, o un naso come il tuo. Mm -hmm. 
tristezza per favore vai via tanto tu a casa mia non entrerai mai Congratulations to all of the talented short work filmmakers and winners, and thank you to the jury. Time now to turn it over to Jennifer Marin, president and founder of the Alliance of Women Film Journalists, and Marina Antunes, AWFJ chair and editor-in-chief of Quiet Earth, to announce the EDA awards for Best Female Directed Short, Best Female Directed Documentary, and Best Female Directed Narrative Feature. Greetings, everyone, from New York. I'm Jennifer Marin, president of the Alliance of Women Film Journalists. Joining me from Vancouver is Marina Antunes. We are with you to present the AWFJ EDA Awards for Best Female Directed Films at the 2021 Whistler Film Festival. Congratulations to all of this year's winners. The Best Female Directed Short Film is Fan Me, directed by Carmine Pierre Dufour and Sandrine Brodeau Desroyes. Fan Me mines the unspoken bonds of mother-daughter relationships to provide an intimate portrait of two strong-willed women who will do anything in their power to protect each other and learn from their past mistakes. Congratulations. I'm also very pleased to present the Ida Award for Best Female Directed Documentary to Savvy from director Robin Hauser. Using strong visuals, colorful animation, and informed, engaging experts, Robin Hauser's Savvy is proof that learning about financial literacy can be fun and educational. The film has the power to change lives, giving individuals, particularly women, who are specifically vulnerable to money troubles, practical steps to achieving and maintaining solvency. Congratulations. Yahoo! I'm thrilled. I mean, that's so exciting. Um, yeah. So thank you. I mean, I'm absolutely delighted. This is fun. I'm right in the middle of writing a proposal for some underwriting for some college screenings of the film. Um, and I can just boast about this, that we just won an award at Whistler. I started making this film before COVID and then COVID hit. And I honestly thought at one point I wasn't going to be able to finish raising the money for the film or um you know maybe even finished filming some of the scenes it was really incredibly stressful and now seeing the way you know we made it through we finished the film thanks to some of our incredible funders and you know to my team being able to adapt and 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 adjust and finding different people to um to come into the film but it is so incredibly rewarding to see that it's being appreciated on the film festival circuit and that the audience is really understanding um, and responding to it. And it's been really impactful. So uh, this That's is so good. good. Thank you. It is for sure. So thanks to all of you for choosing it. And I'm sorry I couldn't be there in person, but I'm glad the festival went well. And I'm excited to have, you know, this opportunity for people to, to screen the film. So um, I, I will be, you know, putting out on social media and letting everybody know that they can see it until the end of the month. Yes, for best female directed feature film. Again, congratulations to all the nominees. You're just splendid. But our special congratulations to Sarah Fortin, the director of Nouvelle Quebec. Nouvelle Quebec is a suspenseful and thoroughly engaging slow burning drama from first-time writer-director Sarah Fortin. Essentially, the film is a couple in crisis drama wrapped in a mystery. Fortin's film thrives in how it captures and represents intense trauma in an isolated location and the culture of the areas Inu and Nascapi residents with the dexterity of a much more experienced film director. Nouveau Quebec. Yeah has won the best female directed feature um, for the EDA awards. So- What? Yes. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, the EDA great. awards are presented by Alliance of Women in Film and Journalism. So congratulations. Thank you, I'm blushing. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, that's really great. I was so happy yesterday when they told me that it was like, uh, yeah, equal between like uh, male and female directors. So that was a great thing. So I'm really happy to be 
well, to be a part of this uh, group of uh, women directors, and I'm really happy that I won this uh, award. So this is a big surprise for me. Euh, donc, je voudrais remercier euh, l'association AWFG pour le prix que, que, que je viens de remporter. Je suis vraiment très fière, en fait, de faire partie d'un aussi grand groupe de femmes réalisatrices. Ça a pris beaucoup de temps avant qu'il qu y ait de la place, assez de place, particulièrement dans les films de fiction. Donc, euh, je suis vraiment fière d'avoir pu faire ce film-là en tant que femme réalisatrice, avec un rôle principal féminin aussi, des rôles féminins très forts, je crois, dans le film. Et puis, je suis vraiment... Euh, Très ému de recevoir ça de la part d'un jury très diversifié aussi. Et euh, ben, ça donne envie de continuer, de faire d'autres films et une petite tape dans le dos qui est très, très appréciée. Donc, merci beaucoup à l'organisation. Et merci au Whistler Film Festival. Congratulations to the winners of the Alliance of Women Film Journalists EDA Awards. We are absolutely thrilled to be honoring these gifted filmmakers and performers and celebrating their massive achievements. Bravo. A trailblazer is a pioneer, someone willing to take risks and follow a path that isn't always well-traveled. And every year, the Whistler Film Festival presents the Trailblazer Award to an actor who engages audiences with meaningful and impactful work. This year, we honor an Emmy Award winner who starred in dozens of films and TV hits like Will and Grace, and the Netflix hit Travelers, where he also served as a director and producer. He's Eric McCormick, and he's a household name here in Canada and beyond. Eric has a star on Canada's Walk of Fame and the Hollywood Walk of Fame, and is currently starring in the Whistler Film Festival's national festival VOD premiere of Drinkwater, an unapologetically Canadian coming-of-age film by Stephen Campanelli that's refreshing, upbeat, and hilarious, which we all know is Eric's forte. And yes, it's so Canadian, there's even a Zamboni in it. Let's give it up to the 2021 recipient of the Whistler Film Festival's Trailblazer Award, the one and only Eric McCormick. Uh, thank you so much to, to Angela and Shauna and everybody at the Whistler Film Festival who, who were so welcoming to all of my Drinkwater family. We couldn't think of a better place to show off our, our little BC made film. Um, this award, I, I never thought of myself as a, as a trailblazer. I always figured I was just following in the footsteps of, of the actors that I'd always looked up to. Um, but I guess over time, you make those footsteps your own. You mix and match your influences and hopefully create something fresh, something that is genuinely you. Uh, so if my journey from the theater to the screen, from Canada, to the U.S., from drama to comedy, if, if that's blazed a trail for even one young artist, then that truly, truly thrills me. Um, thank you for this honor, uh, and thank you to, to Jim Yelton for designing uh, this, this beautiful talking stick. I will always keep it close, and I guess that means I will always be talking. Thank you. Now to celebrate the 8th annual Whistler Film Festival's Stars to Watch, presented by UBCP ACTRA. This program is a festival immersion experience for UBCP ACTRA member actors who are connected to features premiering at the festival and is part of our ongoing commitment to promote Canadian cinema and talent on the world stage. What you'll find here is an impressive group, five talented actors all from Western Canada and each on a trajectory for international success. Let's welcome our UBCP actor representative to introduce this year's Stars to Watch. Hey everybody, my name is Broadus Madison and I'm a director on the executive board of UBCP ACTRA. Santa Claus is coming officially on the 25th, but he has already dropped off an early Christmas present to me. I attended my first Whistler Film Festival and it was a wonderful experience. The Whistler Film Festival serves to amplify and elevate filmmaking in British Columbia. One of my favorite parts of the festival, though, was the spotlight on our future, and that was the stars to watch. This is a group of actors from Western Canada 
that were chosen by a panel of industry professionals and brought to the film festival to connect and commune with other industry professionals and to strut their stuff in the coolest film festival in Canada. I was moved to be around these stars to watch. They were shining with such authenticity and they were unapologetic about it. Overall, it was an affirming and moving experience for me uh, to be, to know that our future is in good hands. They give cre credence to the idea that art is a manifestation of the soul. Anyway, I've got to get back to work. San is calling my name. I want you all to take care. Hope this holiday season finds you in high spirits and good health. One family, peace and blessings. See you around. And here are this year's stars to watch. Daniel Doheny as Mike Drinkwater in the National Festival VOD premiere of Drinkwater, directed by Stephen Campanelli. Don't pretend like you care. I know that you don't. You are a 50-year-old shut-in, completely obsessed and, and driven by your own delusions. Did you know that I got into university? Did you know that? Did you know that I'm running a race next week to try to get a scholarship? That's great, Mikey. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to do it anymore. Rumbi Muzofa in the role of Evelyn in the world premiere of Evelyn, directed by Carl Basai. Evelyn. Evelyn? Is everything okay? Lorizo Tronco in the role of Wallace Owens in the National Festival VOD premiere of Drinkwater, directed by Stephen Campanelli. You're gonna give up because some girl doesn't give a shit about you? Why are you saying this? Because I'm the only one who's cared in the last two months and you're... You're too damn oblivious to even notice. Okay, does, does Danny know about your dad? Does she help you train? I was your closest friend and you didn't even notice. You don't care about anything worth something. You're being irrational and delusional. Just like Hank. Asavak Kustachin in the role of Tom in the BC premiere of Run, Woman, Run, directed by Zoe Lee Hopkins. You were a runner in the war. I carried messages. And you weren't missing. And the army told your wife you died. Came home. She was married to someone else. Oh, shit. Did you get her back? No. Nah. That's where I really dodged a bullet. <laughs> hey. oh. Oh. Running for my son felt way easier, but it's still hard. Like, really hard. Just run for your son. Honor him. Make this day one. Katie Boland as Finn Nikki in the Canadian premiere of We're All in This Together, which she also directed and wrote. Paris! You're not the first 17-year-old girl who thinks she's fucking smarter than everybody, okay? You're lucky, because when you were young, the Mets were working in Mama's son. Fucking crazy, like she was with Nikki and I. Promise me you won't leave. What? Promise me that when Mom wakes up, you won't just leave again. <laughs> Paris, Mom might not wake up. Congratulations to all of the stars to watch. Next, I'd like to introduce the award for Best Mountain Culture Film presented by Whistler Blackcomb. This category is inspired by this festival's unique and awe-inspiring setting and features films from around the world that capture mountain places and experiences with a cinematic flourish. And our jury of industry professionals, Brian Hockenstein, Caroline Heaton, and Carrie Yap are here to present the Mountain Culture Award. 
Hey everybody, I'm Brian Hawkinstein, local filmmaker and super stoked to be on the Mountain Culture Film Jury this year at the Worcester Film Festival. Hi, I'm Carrie Yap. I'm also really excited and um, proud to be part of the Mountain Culture Jury member as well. <laughs> and my name is Caroline Hayden and I'm a filmmaker based in Canmore and excited to be on the Mountain Culture Film Jury as well. We would like to award an honorable mention to Cassie DeCollin's Precious Leader Woman. It was an essential story that shines a new light on being an athlete in the mountains. It was a poignant story in an important moment in our culture, grappling with what reconciliation and culture identity looks like. At its heart, it's a story of family, love, which has universal appeal. And we are happy to announce that Buried wins Best Mountain Culture Film. It was a truly stunning piece that took a hard look at our relationship to mountains, to loss that endures, and the risks that we take in mountain places. It was a masterful cinematic journey into a world of grief, trauma, and hope. Congratulations. As we're driving down the road, we observe the snow cascading off the snowbanks. The snow would be settling like many continuous avalanches you drove down the road. There was a specialness in the snow on the surface. Every little thing was moving and there was a tinkle, literally a tinkle sound to the snow. The Whistler Film Festival was founded in 2001 by longtime friends Shauna Hardy and Casey Lubin, who met in university and reunited in Whistler, BC. Both founders volunteered to launch the festival until 2004 when Shauna Hardy took the reins as the executive director until 2020. Casey Lubin returned several times in programming and guest service roles to support the organization and served on the board for a decade. In recognition of the founders' vision for Whistler Film Festival and their commitment to the power of arts and culture for community health and well-being, the inaugural Whistler Film Festival Founders Award was presented to George Strombolopoulos at a gala benefit evening December 4th. A passionate supporter of the festival, George is a television and radio broadcaster, media producer, and humanitarian. His Apple Music radio show, Strombo, is heard in over 165 countries worldwide. He's hosted and produced the talk show, George Strombolopoulos, tonight and the hour on Canada's national broadcaster, the CBC. His past work also includes the show Strombolopoulos on CNN and a gig on Hockey Night in Canada. George was also the host of Canada's premier culture show, The New Music, which we all know and love. Congratulations, George, and thank you, Shauna and Casey, for your contributions to the success of the Whistler Film Festival. Hey, George, your friend Shauna Hardy here from the top of Black Oak Mountain in beautiful Whistler, British Columbia. On behalf of myself and Casey Lubin, congratulations on being the inaugural Founders Award recipient. We are so inspired by everything that you do. We're so grateful for you always connecting to us and for showing up, and we can hardly wait to do it again. Congratulations and lots of love. Next up, we have the Best World Documentary Award. With courageous viewpoints and a deep-rooted desire to explore the events that shape our lives, these films capture the human spirit and often challenge us to look at the world from a new perspective. This year's jury was made up of three amazing documentarians, Cheryl Fogo, Robert Hardy, and Laura Perlmutter, who will announce the World Documentary Award. Hello, we are the documentary jury and through careful deliberation, we have selected a winner for the documentary, uh, the World Documentary Award. And the winner is Polystyrene, I Am a Cliché. Polystyrene, I Am a Cliché redefines the music doc genre, illuminating racism and the lack of support for mental wellness in a seamless and intimate experience as seen through the eyes of Polly's daughter, Celeste. Congratulations. Congratulations. Do you think you're a rebel in today's society? Yeah, I suppose I am a bit. <laughs> Polly had her own ideas about everything. She didn't follow trends. She was a woman of colour in an industry full of white middle-class men. But now I find solace in retracing her footsteps. The world is playing catch-up with polystyrene, not the other way around. The 
The Best BC Director Award is presented by the Directors Guild of Canada, British Columbia, and recognizes the achievements of a BC director with a feature film at the festival. And this year, there are five BC films eligible for that award. And here's what the jury had to say. My fellow jurors and I are honored to present the DGCBC Whistler Film Festival Award for Best BC Director to Cassie DeColing for Precious Leader Woman. As a jury, we felt Cassie spoke to the power we have within ourselves to grow and to find a deeper meaning for our existence, one where we can be role models to others, regardless of culture. Spencer O'Brien's journey to becoming one of the best snowboarders in the world, paralleling her journey to becoming the film's namesake, Precious Leader Woman, was so rich, moving, and compelling. Congratulations to all the BC filmmakers in the festival. Canadian independent filmmaking talent, we have the annual Borsos competition for Best Canadian Feature. This award is presented by the Directors Guild of Canada, British Columbia, in association with Telefilm Canada and sponsored by Company 3. It offers the second largest festival prize in the country and includes five distinct awards. But it's more than just the $35,000 prize package, which includes $15,000 in cash and a $20,000 production prize that has filmmakers clamoring for the honor. It's living up to the legacy of the man behind the title. For 18 consecutive years, entries in the Borsos competition for Best Canadian Feature have exuded the creative fire and artistry embodied by legendary Canadian filmmaker Philip Borsos, best known for his inspiring work on the Genie Award-winning films The Grey Fox, and Bethune, The Making of a Hero. Here's a look at the films in this year's competition. On behalf of the Whistler Film Festival, I'd like to thank the Borsos family and the award sponsors for their enduring support of this coveted award. I would now like to welcome Alan Harmon, Chair of the Directors Guild of Canada, British Columbia, and the presenting sponsor of the Borsos competition since 2004. Hello there, fans of the Whistler Film Festival. I'm Alan Harmon. I'm the Chairman of the Directors Guild of Canada, the BC District Council. We always have been and we are still the proud sponsors of the Philip Borsos Award for Best Direction in a Feature Film. And uh, I'd like to hand this over now to the people at the festival who will tell us all who the winner of this year's prestigious award is. Thank you. Thank you to the DGC BC for your support. Another proud sponsor of the 18th Annual Borsos Competition for Best Canadian Feature is Company 3, who provides the $20,000 post-production prize. Company 3 is proud to support the Whistler Film Festival's Borsos Competition for Best Canadian Feature and wishes to congratulate all of the outstanding filmmakers in this category. The Borsos Competition for Best Canadian Feature jury is made up of a diverse group of four Canadian storytellers, three of whom have previously had films at our festival. Thank you to our jury, Tanya Lapointe, Damon D'Oliveira, Sergio Navarretta, and Sterla Gunnarsson. Your job was not easy. The Borsos jury will now present the five Borsos Competition Awards. His cinematography is reminiscent of the great European films of the past. His work in the film Carmen is breathtaking, even magical, and draws in the viewer from the very first frame. As he paints with light, he guides our imagination through the things we see and masterfully keeps us mindful of the things that we don't. The Borsos Award for Best Cinematography goes to Diego Guarro. Congratulations. 
Carmen has actually won the Borso's Award for Best Cinematography. Serious? Yes. <laughs> How did not Mary tell me this? What the heck? <laughs> this is so unexpected and humbling and awkward. <laughs> My goodness. Um, I wish I wasn't like all sleepy and all like absolutely first, I guess the first festival that Carmen, and the, it's, been, it's been a really long post process too, actually. Like we shot it like two and a half years ago. Uh, but it was so good to have at least the premiere in like a Canadian soil too, especially with, you know. Thank you very, very you much. Are. Thank you, Nikki. Say bye-bye. Bye. 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 An existential crisis is triggered for a young woman who returns with her partner to settle her father's estate in Chefreville, Quebec. Sarah Fortin's skillful screenplay for Nouveau Quebec delicately observes the disintegration of two lovers taken out of their comfort zone against an atmospheric backdrop of a nearly extinct Canadian mining town grappling with complex indigenous realities. The film leads us on a journey into northern Quebec where people and landscapes reveal themselves on screen as they rarely have before. The Borsos Award for Best Screenplay goes to Sarah Fortin. Hi everyone, this is Sergio Navaretta. His performance in Cinema of Sleep is nuanced, subtle, powerful, and flawless. He exemplifies the soul of an artist and embodies the life of a character in a way that is unforgettable. The Borsos Award for Best Performance goes to Dio Ade. Congratulations. Hello, everyone. Um, first and foremost, I want to thank God. Oh, Lord Dumare, thank you so much. Um, I want to thank my mother and my father, Deborah and Sunday Adefaraka. My two beautiful sisters, Dr. Temi Tokwe and Adiola Adefarakan. I also want to thank my beautiful wife, Kelly Adefarakan, and our little dog, Taz. I want to thank my rider dies, Coco, Snags, and Jeff. I want to thank our writer and director, Jeff, Jeffrey St. Jules. <sighs> I just endless and just don't even know what to say when it comes to you, but you are an amazing talent and I look forward to us working again. I wanna thank Inferno Pictures, Ian and Sammy, and I wanna thank my co-star, Get Nesh, and our entire cast and our amazing crew that worked so hard to bring this beautiful piece of cinema to all of you. And last but not least, I wanna thank our distinguished panel and jury for the recognition of this film. Thank you all so much. I am honored and humbly accept this award. Thank you. <laughs> I'm fucking with you, Anthony. I'm, I'm, I'm fucking with you. <laughs> hey, where are you going, man? Don't finish. I'm going home. They're not going to let you leave the country, man. None of you are a suspect in this thing. I don't care. I don't like this country. I don't like this country. Hey, what's the matter? Frank. Yeah? I don't feel good. Her contribution to Cinema of Sleep is evocative, and you can't take your eyes off her when she enters the frame.
Her performance takes us on an emotional roller coaster, and we are with her every step of the way. An honorable mention for best performance goes to Getanesh Berhe. Congratulations. We just want to say thank you for the honorable mention for our participation in Cinema of Sleep. Congratulations also to Dio, Jeffrey, and Sunny. We were so happy to be part of this production in Winnipeg, and I especially want to thank my aunt for all of the work that she put into the script and my character and the warmth that she brought to the production. Congratulations to everyone in Winnipeg. Happy holidays. Okay. Bye. 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 We love you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs>
If you're like me and you didn't get to see as many films as you would have liked, don't fret. Because you can see all the award-winning films and more online at WhistlerFilmFestival.com right across the country until New Year's Eve. You can also enjoy watching the Signature Series Conversations featuring our honorees as well as events and industry sessions worldwide until the end of the month. And if you haven't finished your holiday shopping or have an aversion to malls, give the gift of story. Supporting the Whistler Film Festival, its filmmakers and the ongoing programs that serve to advance Canadian talent. As a charitable cultural organization, the Whistler Film Festival Society relies on the support of its funders, sponsors and patrons like you to deliver programs that support great independent voices in Canadian cinema. And there are three easy ways you can show a little love to the Whistler Film Festival and Canadian filmmakers. Buy a ticket or a ticket package and support Whistler Film Fest's filmmakers who are receiving 50% of the net ticket proceeds. Shop at our online store and buy festival merchandise. Donate. Make your donation count before the end of the tax year and receive a charitable receipt. Discover more at whistlerfilmfestival.com slash give. Well, that's it for me, everyone. Thank you so much. Please stay safe, stay connected, and best wishes for the holidays from the Whistler Film Festival. Now we leave you with a look at what you can watch until the end of the year.